with me now, Marzia. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Andrew? I'm good. So please tell everybody who you are, what you do, and why you're here. Yeah, sure. So I'm Marcia. I'm calling in from Barcelona. Many of you probably already know me. I'm um, currently the Intelligence Director at Transformers Foundation. And today I'm here to share with you a very important uh, work that we've done together with Andrew and all the foundation um, team. So can um, Andrew is my screen um, there? Yeah. And you can yeah. So over the past few months, we've been working on um, a huge report. It's called Ending Unethical Brand and Retail Behavior. And um, many of you should have already received in your inbox the news about it. So I'm hoping that uh, we reached out to all of you already. Uh, if not, at the end of the session, I'm going to share with you the link uh, to this report. And um, what makes these reports so unique is the fact, uh, and Andrew, uh, I think you can add in on that, is the fact that it's the first time that the denim supply chain finally speaks up as one unified voice and in it's calling out on the brands that haven't behaved so well during the past crisis uh, and the current crisis, but also um, in the hope that we can reshape together a better industry and moving forward can build ethics and care into, into our industry. And, but I know Andrew briefly, maybe you want to introduce who the Transformers Foundation is. I think you're best positioned to share that as the um, founder. We can, um, the Transformers Foundation is, is a representation of the supply chain. Um, we have um, a group of founders from all segments of the, of the um, of the supply chain, and the idea is is that we represent the supply chain and, and present our voice on educational matters. So we educate students and we educate industry on different things that are new. And at the same time, is that we study and develop changes to the industry that will uh, make the industry more sustainable, and also examine um, unsustainable greenwashing kind of stuff. So we would like to be, um, yeah. A vehicle for the supply chain to voice their their worries, their concerns, and celebrate the best in in um, class. So, um, why is there a report needed? I touched upon it briefly, so I won't go into the details. But the intent of this report, when we um, when we started working, was one to identify the causes. And the root cause is actually the problematic relationship that many of you um, know already, the power imbalance between brands and denim suppliers. But also, it wasn't only to attack ident identifying the cause, but actually put forth um, action and what are the actual solutions that we can put into place to enact long term change, not only short term. And not only, um, um, how do you say, like a, a response to the crisis, but something that we can enact for the long term. And so what we did uh, with this report, I, myself and Alden, Michael, Arthur, Andrew and all the team have had hundreds of conversations with suppliers, hundreds of conversations, uh, hours of conversation with NGOs, with um, we activists in this space, but mainly what we did, we tried to get and raise the voice of the denim supply chain through our survey. Um, our survey um, with many different questions around ethical practices of brands went, went out to 79 leading denim suppliers. Some of you probably tuned in, but we only received 25 responses. And this is to say that there's a fear of speaking out from, uh, from suppliers, we've seen it. We have long-term established relationship with most of you, and, um, but only a few replied. So hopefully in the future, this will set um, more of a safe space for you to speak up. Can I give an example of that? So I fly a lot before pre-COVID with United and everybody who flies United has a million complaints. If someone did a survey on their performance and the, their behavior towards their customer, and we sent it out to 79 passengers, all 79 would respond. <laughs> Yet when we do it in the supply chain, very few want to respond. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's a comparison. 
No worry. But um, yeah, so the sample was small, um, but the, supply, the suppliers, but the ones that replied were really the leading animals. So we hope that it is representative of what happened. And so it, the meals range in size, the geography is very broad. So um, I won't go into further details. You can find the details in the report. But what did emerge so that Brands, BRI stands by brands and retailers and importers, and behavior towards suppliers was not cool. Um, we had um, my conversations were uh, sometimes um, dreadful and painful to, uh, with the suppliers. It wasn't, it wasn't showing a pretty picture, but we know we are all in crisis, but some of the behaviors were not um, unjustifiable. So we identified destructive behavior, which I've spoken about. Um, we identified some, some brands enacted bare minimum, uh, so paying on time, et cetera. Some have some creative solutions, but what we wanna go towards is actually brands embracing transformers behavior, what we call transformers behavior. And in the report and in the next um, uh, webinar, where we go more into the details, because today we only have 10 minutes to discuss, we're gonna discuss exactly that, the transformers behavior, what can brands put into place. And just to note, none of the brands showed all of these practices, some of them had uh, enabled um, and enact some of this. But if we actually promote all together to enact all these practices, we could really push the industry forward. Um, and uh, can I interrupt just here for one second? One of the things that I, I want to say is that during COVID, everybody's under stress. I mean, every company's under stress. We're all under stress. It's not so much that somebody asks someone a, a favor or asks them to help. What we're talking about is um, contracts that were unilaterally um, discarded. So we have no issue whatsoever with anyone renegotiating a contract in good faith because of a condition, zero. We all do it. Um, what we have is unilateral dictation that this is our contract, it doesn't matter, you're gonna get this. Sorry, but that is where we're coming from. And that, that's, that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. So that kind of behavior is unacceptable. Yeah, and uh, well, um, sorry <laughs> for that. Um, I think that's where we're going towards. And um, what we found in the in our survey and during our um, interviews with suppliers is that none of the suppliers managed to have orders cancellation below ten percent during the crisis. It was no shared characteristic in size, market segment, and everything, but um, it was a shared um, issue. Um, and then the supplies we found out that were most interested in when uh, um, uh, dealing with new brands and customers uh, uh, to evaluate the business model and uh, to check the history of financial stability of brands. This has been said that supplies can do this individually if they have the privilege to do. And um, that we, we can discuss more of that in, um, in the next webinar. And so, the conclusion was that supplies cannot fix this on their own. The system needs change as, um, as an overall. Um, many of you here know why did this happen. Um, there was an overcapacity in the industry. The financial risk is pushed down to suppliers. Brands refuse to own their liabilities. And brands buy, some buyers are very inexperienced and are unaware of their repercussion of low prices. Um, again, there's many causes. Uh, we identified a few here that suppliers have no legal power uh, most of the time. Uh, factories fear of speaking out. We touched on that point and many more um, causes that we analyze deeper in, in the report. Um, so what, what are we asking for here? Um, we put forward so, some calls to action for brands and it's we can't pick and choose what to do. We need to really push for all this action in order to uh, take place. Uh, and, um, and so what are we asking to brands? Um, some of the calls to actions are around own your liabilities, number one, establish long-term uh, partnership with suppliers and go beyond your simple supplier tier one list and support transparency and due diligence, uh, due diligence legislation. And then we can exactly on the second, as I said, we can really discuss in further details what are the actions that can, can really take place. 
um, amongst the others, reform the KPI system for bioperformance, not only based on margins and, and other uh, commercial hits, but also on ethics. Um, we're working on with better buying on this. And then, but we also has Transformers Foundation, we have our own responsibility. Um, we have created a buyer's um, a supplier code of conduct because often the code of conduct comes from brands um, pushed down to the suppliers while the suppliers can also have a code of conduct towards brands. Um, and then we are forming a supplier's short-term working group. I need to go fast and yeah, I think we're short on time, but um, we can discuss in further detail some of these. Um, this is our code of conduct that we ask um, all suppliers to embrace and the uh, and brands as well. I'd like to say something here. We're, we're, if you read the the titles, we're not asking for big deals. We're asking for things like honesty and transparency, empathy, loyalty, respect, accountability, reputation, and morale. These are kind of like the ten commandments that we thought th these things don't exist now. On um, so what we want is we want the supply chain to all endorse this. And then if the supply chain endorses this as basic features of buyers, then we can go to the buyers and say, hey, your supply chain all thinks this is the minimum practice that you should follow, like to be honest and stuff. And maybe you could agree to that. Yeah. Sorry. Sure. And again, yeah, we ask in the supply chain to endorse these ethic ethical principles and to join a supplier working group where we discuss, we can discuss forecasting, how to how to put enact change for improve um, um, the the section on own uh, the, of the brands owning their liabilities, and mainly we we also like want for suppliers to, to voice the concern and demand a seat at the table where, um, where they're not heard. Um, we have calls to action also for NGOs, labor unions, policymakers in buyers and supplying countries, for denim lovers and consumers. And um, so what can you do right now? Uh, today, you can register to attend the presentation that we have on November 2nd, where we discuss the calls to action, as I said, in detail. And I'm really looking forward to this because I think aside from criticizing and analyzing, I think we need to really uh, move forward and enact change. And together with you, we can do that. And then um, I encourage you to read the full report. Um, it's on at this link. So transformersfoundation.org um, slash annual report. And if you, um, get bored of reading a 79, 75 pages on a report, you can also follow the, um, let's say the um, snippets on Instagram, which is at Transformers Foundation and the hashtag ethicalized denim. And yeah, I don't know if that was, uh, that was quick enough, but if there are any questions, you can email me or uh, I don't know if you have a few minutes for, for any questions that, we don't have any questions that I can see right now. I was hoping for questions. We left time for questions. There don't seem to be any. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, we have our event on Monday. So hopefully if somebody's really interested in it, they'll attend on Monday. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we have to just say as a summary is that when we started our foundation in January, we had no intention of getting involved in this. Um, we were just thinking about our, our foundation working on sustainability. And then this whole thing with COVID happened and it was such a crisis in the industry. And um, sustainability had to take a little bit of a backseat to, to, to the workers and to the different people that were affected through the, the behaviors. So anyway, that's, that's it. Is there anything that you want to say, Marzia, before we cut it off? No, I think as, I mean, you know, Andrew, I, I don't work only as Transformers Foundation. I have, um, I'm, I'm a consultant as well. And I see like the, the value of this and like, it's not just NGOs speaking on behalf of someone. It's really like, we really went deep into the supply chain. I think I see a lot of value and difference in the um, actions that we put forward and hopefully, um, yeah, the voice of the denim industry can be heard this time. So. Well, we had a fantastic working relationship with you and with Alden, and we really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you to Sally for the nice, um, not question, but comment. Appreciate it. And um, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.